There we go. Yeah, I'm going to log in. Good evening, everyone. We'll just wait a moment as people are just logging in now. And welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Or joining me. <laughs> it's always so fun to talk to thousands of people, but you can't hear anybody. Um, okay, so I'm just going to line a few things up, and we'll start in one second. I'm going to just test that everything's in order. Okay, uh, Sherry, I'm going to hang up there. Okay. Got to turn on my recorder. One sec. Okay. Okay, good evening, everyone. Here we are. Um, thanks for joining us. If you came to um, the one on essential oils um, or dental care, that is also available on the Building Strengths um, webinar website. You can get replays available. And, um, you know, often I tell people not to take notes while I'm talking, but I think there's a lot of information and you will want to take some notes. So have a pen and paper ready. And also, you can type in questions as we go along. And at the end, I will I'll answer every question. So if something comes up, just type it, and then that way you don't have to remember. And um, let's we'll have fun. And also, I'm available to answer emails afterwards. You can always get in touch with us um, at our website, which is www.livinglibations.com. And um, my email address is sage, S-A-G-E, at livinglibations.com. And I'd like to thank David and Sherry for hosting this and hosting a lot of really great webinars. This month, um, there's some other ones upcoming on hormone health and thyroid, which, you know, really are also totally relevant to beauty. When you have your hormones in order and the thyroid is secreting the proper hormones and balancing the body, then that's also beautifying. So we'll talk a little bit about hormones today. So let's get started. I wanted to, I'll talk about some practical things. I'll bring beauty into a wider perspective and I really hope that you'll, um, you'll learn and will engage in things that perhaps you haven't thought about before or you may not even know. And of course, we'll approach beauty in a different way. And um, you certainly won't walk away tonight with um, any three-step regimens, beauty regimens to do morning and night. And uh, it'll be quite liberating. And what also we can see is that, once again, nutrition and health are really obviously a part of beauty. And um, let's see. Let's go into our first thing here. It's a really neat p picture of the body. Uh, this is done by Alex Gray. And what, why I chose this image is I'm really tr I want to talk about the body in a way that's sort of beyond the skin and um, even what's been known in the body. There's, like, obviously the epidermis and the different layers like that, but the skin really is its own sort of um, magical entity and its own organ within the body system. So tonight I want to address the processes of um, the skin and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what causes aging and what causes skin imbalances. Um, so we'll go into aging or anti-aging if you will which really is just great health um, for all the time that you're alive. And then skin imbalances, really, at the root of it all, whether it's acne or a scar that won't heal or stretch marks or um, eczema, psoriasis, or um, when you go to a dermatologist and they go, well, your rash is a dermatologist, I mean, <laughs> it's a dermatitis, <laughs> and that's what they call it. So all those sort of things that erupt on the skin, all of those imbalances, the root of it all is inflammation. And inflammation is also, um, if there's inflammation in the body, that's also setting a path towards aging quicker than, than one needs to. So um, anti-aging and skin being balanced, really uh, at the core of it, a lot of it is um, anti-inflammatory. So having a body that's not in an inflamed response. And then the other thing about aging is really it's, it's the disintegration. So the, the, what's supposed to be integrated in the body, in the skin, 
is the water, the protein, and the fat. So when those three, when that nexus, that triad, starts to disintegrate, that is also aging. So um, we want to talk about things that can also help that. So with the fat layer, with the lipid, with the skin, definitely, you know, one can use serums and oils and replace it that way. The water part of the skin is obviously drinking good water and things that protect the cell membrane, which again is the lipid, the fat, that keep the water in there, and then using things that also help to summon water to the area. And uh, so we'll go into more, we'll go more into that. And then the other thing is um, keeping the cells, um, you know, like in their free-floating state and they're juicy and the mitochondria in there, having them be energized and having the DNA. The DNA is like the owner's manual for your body. I know it gets, I mean, we all know, we've all heard of DNA, but really what is it? And it's like, it's the thing, it's the owner's manual, it's the... It's the conductor for the orchestra that keeps telling the cells how to replicate themselves. And then within the core of each cell is the mitochondria, which are also major messengers for the body. And um, sort of what keeps these cells in a, in a good state. So the two ways that you can go into an inflammatory state or create early aging are um, Inflammatory imbalances through toxicity, toxins, and poor nutrition. And this is a really interesting area for skin care because toxicity is so, it's so a part of the industry, so to speak. And, um, you know, when I got into all of this when I was about 18 years old, um, well, actually, it was even before that. I mean, I would just love to play and make things and make mud masks, and that was sort of at a very fun age. And even grade nine, I was recreating a perfume with essential oils. But really, when I was 18, I sort of got it all on an intellectual level. Um, prior to that, I had a few years from like 16 to 18 with just like a ridiculously abundant bathroom filled with like hand-me-downs from my sister and my mother of all kinds of skincare lines and definitely like the 12-step programs for cleansing your skin and I had every perfume in the world and it was really fun to explore that and I was really fascinated with it too and also at that time uh, the body shop had opened up and and that seemed like such a revelation and and things seemed a little bit closer to real and the pineapple face wash smelled really interesting but it was at 18 that I realized that the body shop was also filled with toxins and things that you didn't want to put on your body, and that the dewberry perfume was not from a plant, and that the dew, you know, that was not a tree, and the white musk wasn't from deers, thankfully, um, and that all of the products that were, you know, against animal testing, all of the ingredients, perhaps the body shop hadn't tested on animals, but all those ingredients to exist in cosmetics had to be tested on animals to get approved, like sodium oral sulfate and all of that. So it was, sort of, it was at that moment, it really only was like a couple days where I really understood that the whole structure of the beauty care cosmetic industry and the, and the structure of the supermarket, that there was all of these fake and processed foods and things to put on our body. So I just went back to sort of the, that playing around that I had in grade nine and uh, where I would even had found this book on making your own cosmetics and I went back to those sort of roots and I started making everything and actually the first thing I ever made was lip balm and to this day it's my same formula from when I was 18 and it was so much fun and it was so fun to explore this palette of real essences and, and plant matter and botanical matter that would actually you know, do what was promised, and, um, and it was so fun to work with. And um, later we'll go more into the essential oils, but I, it's, I still find them to be the, the really the, the root and sort of the palette of everything I work from because they're so concentrated and pro potent and relevant to what we're talking about today. Each essential oil, to varying degree, is anti-inflammatory, and with that, you know, antioxidant, so also anti-aging, and they become really a lot of the active ingredients in what we're, what we're working with. 
to revivify the cells. So love the essential oils for all that they offer. And um, so back to the whole thing about discovering that the whole cosmetic industry was toxic when I was 18. Um, sort of that was it. And I was like, well, it's toxic. It would be a lot for your body to process. It's not real. It's kind of like a poison. So that was the end of it. Um, and then interestingly, this year, I've been um, studying a lot about hor uh, hormones and their effects on the body. And with that, the effects of the DNA and getting into the cell structures. And with that, a whole renewed sense of awe at, oh my God, we so can't be using toxins in skincare at all because they really are, they're the fuel, they've, they're for aging, they're pro-aging, they're pro-inflammatory. Um, so it really brought a, a renewed interest in explaining the toxicity of the, these materials. I mean, normally I like to just go into the positive and, um, and talk about the solutions, but really with great awe, I was like, wow. I mean, it's just like eating processed foods and the damage that it can do to your DNA. So definitely by not using toxic cosmetics and eating whole unprocessed food, you, you know, you're totally, you're already looking at a great, you'll have in your body um, all the great makings of showing your best skin. And beauty really at the heart of it all is, is having good skin. So um, what I also wanted to talk about is the skin. So let's get into that a bit. We all know it's the body's largest organ and it eliminates over two pounds of stuff every day. Like from your pores, two pounds of stuff go out. So it's really great to do things that circulate through the system, help the lymph system, help circulation. And it's really great to sweat, to do hot, cold showers, hot, cold baths, have a sauna, jump in a lake. All those things are so great for allowing that stuff to flow in and out of the body. And excuse me one second, I need some water. Some great spring water here from our local spring. So, back to the skin. The skin is made up of the same, when, you're, when, when there's a child in utero, uh, when you're just like an embryo, the same cells that make up the skin also make up the brain. So there's a real connection between um, what's good for the brain is good for the skin like the same fats and all those things that make the body work also make the skin work. And um, what's also really interesting is that the skin has as much ability to communicate to the rest of the body um, as does the endocrine system. So it has, it's in the skin, on the skin, commuting, communicating to the other organs, um, our neuropeptides, neurotransmitters, and when something comes into contact with the skin, it's the skin's job to communicate to the other organs about what's going on. Um, obviously, it's the only organ we can see. It's, it's an organ that's at the interface of, of the whole rest of the body. The skin is representing the inside world and the, and the outside world, or that's the outside world and <laughs> the inside world. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a huge, it's a huge deal, your skin, and we gotta take care of it. So, um, the skin also breathes. Um, the skin has an amazing ability. It's like if we were a tree or a plant and the plants do photosynthesis, well, the skin, our skin, does this, has a photosynthesis process with the sun. So the sun is very important, and we're going to go into that later about taking care of your skin in the sun. Um, but yeah, their skin has a photosynthesis ability, which is so key for over 2,000 functions in the body. And um, the skin has the ability to produce a precursor steroid horm hormone, which flows through the body. And that hormone is called vitamin D, which is a bit silly, but they named it a vitamin instead of a hormone. But vitamin D is actually a hormone that courses through your body. And sunlight, it's, it's a little bit in food, but it's, a, it's like a fat-soluble vitamin hormone, and 
it's uh, you can get it in some food, but really you do need sun to really get it going. Um, so your your skin is able to process a large amount of data to the inside of your body and the outside of your body. Um, outside, your your skin's able to release um, pheromones from your glands and communicate to those around you. And um, you know, if we were in a room full of people, consciously we may not know things, but our pheromones would be talking to each other. <laughs> So our skins would be talking to each other far beyond anything we would know. And um, it's this kind of communication that really, that scent that is being released by the skin that enables people to, you know, find lovers and choose mates. Um, you know, there's a great, great, uh, there's a lot to be said for skin-to-skin um, -skin contact. Um, the communication, especially in those early years between mother and child and a father and child with the skin to skin contact, you know, a father, just a baby on a father's chest is so great and you can hear the heartbeat. And um, a mother and child are passing back hormonal messages all the time about feeding and all those things that we just really can't even measure or quantify. So skin to skin contact is important. And... Um, also, with skin-to-skin -skin contact, you learn so much more about your, your friend or lover. And um, the infrared heat generated by skin-to-skin -skin contact is so good for cells as well. It's really healthy for, for people to experience that. Um, so that's another cool thing about the skin. And um, let's see, I have made some notes for tonight because this is all new stuff and I'm excited to share it. Um, also, yes, so there's the skin and then there's your relationship to the ether outside of you. And, um, and that is your connection to the cosmos, to the earth, and that you definitely want to have in order and you don't want to have it clogged with a lot of um, synthetic chemicals. Um, so toxins, let's talk about the toxins. So um, again, I've been really amazed to see that, um, you know, I knew about endocrine disruptors and I knew that um, so, so many things that we use can um, disrupt the hormone system, especially on, in young children if they're developing. Um, so they can disrupt hormones. You can get a lot of xenoestrogens in the system and those can come from plaque plastics and petroleums and the things that make up synthetic fragrances and um, if you're even if so if you're a, a developing person a younger child or already a fully fledged adult these endocrine disruptors um, what they do is they put a lot more um, xenoestrogens in the body and so this is like we get too estrogenic and men as well we get too many of these um, female hormones coursing through the body and they're imbalanced and um, that can come from other things too like soy and beer and birth control pills and hormone replacement pills and all of those increase a lot of estrogen and um, it's the type of estrogen that can be precancerous as well. So toxic cosmetics have that going for them and um, they also have you know what I want to do? I've got to show you a couple more slides. <laughs> I forgot about keeping up with the slides. Okay, here's a great, uh, um, another great one by Alex Gray. And um, I like this one because it shows the skin-to-skin -skin contact and these, um, this neural net that surrounds the body and is communicating inside the body and outside the body. And what we also see, you guys just liked it because there's some suns up in the corner and just showing that the sun is nothing to be afraid of. Um, but it actually helps us grow and is, is helping over 2,000 functions in the body. So that's a fun picture. Here are some happy, healthy cells with the mitochondria in the center. And get my little slide thing going. Okay, here we have the the rest of the world in cosmetics. <laughs> okay, so um, so we have the endocrine disruptors and um, 
we've got, so that's like caused by things like plastics and phthalates and BPA, so the containers that they're in as well. Then some of the other, the other thing too is I think the main thing when you're putting toxins in the body is that, you know, there's a part of your, a huge part of your body that knows that it's total poison. And then there's another part of your, like there's a, like that part of your brain that's going, oh, I want a copper tone tan. I want to look like that cover of a magazine. And then the other, then you're getting that product on you. And then the rest of your body is just saying, it's just, it just knows it's poison. So you're kind of creating this huge schism in your being where, you know, repeatedly and ritually and every day through, for the sake of a beauty regime, you're putting poisons and toxins on the body. And I think that creates like a breach after a while. And um, I think what modern marketing and consumerism has done is they market, they create this gap between you and you, between you and your body. And then they, you know, they create that problem and then it's just filled. They just create the solution. And, um, you know, often the solution hasn't had too much thought in it. And, um, and it's often just easy stuff. And I'm not sure how everything got so chemicalized. Um, but really, we can get quite a toxic overload because if we're just putting that goop all over us every day, I mean, the body has to process it. For example, um, some shampoos contain so much nitrate in them that just simply the act of washing your hair um, and the stuff going into your scalp, your liver has to process as many nitrates as it would as eating a pound of preserved bacon. Um, so there's a lot you're asking for the body to deal with, and they're really not necessary. So inside are these inflammatory responses. Um, just like when, if, you're, if one were to eat a lot of processed food, like for example, MSG, it creates DNA damage. It, it, it forever changes the structure of the cells. So um, it's really a good thing to avoid the toxins. Other things is they, um, the alcohols, the synthetic, synthet, synthetic alcohols. Like I remember when I was 16, we, you know, we would use Clinique, and you'd get that bar of soap, and you'd get that toner, that big thing of toner. And I don't remember the smell because I know what it is now. And it's basically a big bottle of rubbing alcohol, of isopropyl alcohol. Totally gross. Totally stripping the whole skin, and. Um, and really, well, I don't know how much it costs, but like isopropyl alcohol is, is just dirt cheap. So, you know, it's like the, the, the insides of what's in these bottles, too, isn't so pretty at all. And um, the, another huge one that the body has to deal with is um, propylene glycol. Propylene glycol, this is a picture of antifreeze, and you may be wondering why what's related, but propylene glycol is antifreeze. And propylene glycol is used to join oil and water, and it's so it and it's it's got about ten different derivatives are in so many things. It's amazing, um, you know, from eye creams to um, just creams in general. So that's what they use to de-ice planes, and of course you all know it as a windshield wiper fluid. So propylene glycol. The other thing that is in so many products is what they're made up of, which is mineral oil, like. Um, Baby oil or Johnson Johnson's baby oil is, is pure mineral oil, and mineral oil is made up of um, petroleum. That's petroleum, which is a major ingredient, um, or its derivatives, of course. Um, so from that, you can get synthetic fragrances, um, the oil base. That's why sometimes when people, because um, I use a lot of different jojoba, and we talk about oil for cleansing, and they're like, oh, but I don't want it to feel too oily. And um, people are amazed because... Because it's, it's the mineral oil that actually doesn't go in the skin and using it. I don't know if, if you ever remember baby oil because that's a good example because it's just pure petroleum mineral oil. But basically, if you ever put that on, it's like putting saran wrap on the skin and it's not allowing the skin to breathe. And um, petroleum is the base of so many cosmetics. Um, and then here we have more cells. And if you look closely, 
maybe I can show. We've got, we've got the DNA showing you where it would go in the cell. Um, I like that picture. Um, so that's the, so basically with toxins, it's you're communicating um, poison to your body. You're communicating, you know, a slow, slow toxic poisoning of the body, um, disrupting the cells, disrupting cellular health, the release of antioxidants. Um, it's not it's not a pretty thing, um, and it certainly doesn't help to create no wrinkles. Um, so let's see what next. Okay, perfumes obviously is another one. I know we're talking more about beauty today, but smell I think is also a part of beauty, and perfumes have a lot of toxins in them. And I do think too, um, you know, we don't need to use deodorants. The um, the apocrine glands are good for communicating things, so I really like the essential oils for for using in the underarms because they keep the natural smell but kind of enhance it. And they're, the essential oils are made from the glands of the plants. And they contain very similar um, plant hormones that we release from the from the glands of our armpits. So they have a great synergy, and um, they're both the, that's the pheromone of the plant, and we're releasing our pheromones. So that's really cool. And also with perfumes, it's like you know you don't want to walk around sort of choking and medicating people. I feel like with perfumes, it's like you want to invite people. It's like the magic happens when somebody's like reaches, extends their nose to inhale you, and that's the subtle whiff of perfume and aroma that you can use to enhance your aura, enhance the beauty, and literally, um, you know, essential oils do expand the aura. Uh, I did a test once with some dowsing rods, and you can see, like when you walk, as soon as somebody, if you do dowsing rods, you can get like a reading about here, and once essential oils go on, you can get a good reading from 10 feet behind. So it really, does create an aura of beauty, um, sort of in the etheric part of beauty, and then you can go down to the finer details of the skin. Um, and definitely there's great ways to take care of the skin, you know, through bathing, infrared saunas, as I said, getting the circulation going, dry brushing is great, great for the glands and the lymph system as well. Um, so let's talk about, uh, oh yeah, different things. Okay, how are we going to get the body anti-inflammatory? Um, so one of the things that really creates, besides toxic food, which is processed food or toxic cosmetics, is um, when our hormones are out of balance and um, the adrenals are producing too much cortisol. I'm sure you've felt those moments and then sometimes if we're sort of living at a stressful level, we're producing levels of cortisol that are sort of shooting through our bodies the whole time. And when that much cortisol is being con excreted continually, um, this wears down the hypothalamus a bit. And the hypothalamus, which is in the center of the brain and is really sort of um, in charge of the whole endocrine system, it's, um, its precision to communicate and orchestrate with the rest of the body gets worn down in a way, and it's not as precise as a communicator. So definitely one of the things you want to take care of in, uh, in, a in your beauty regime, so to speak, is taking care of cortisol levels and stress. Now, I know that's easy to say. <laughs> I know we all hear about stress, like, everywhere. And um, it's like, great. Because if you're running on stress, it's sort of a habitual, repeated way of, um, you know, walking through your daily life. And nobody's to blame you because, I mean, so many things can get those cortisol levels going. Um, so, besides, you know, and we don't have, I wish we did, but we're still trying to, my husband, Ron and I, are still trying to get in a sauna every day. We do have a sauna, but we don't have time. So, um, it's just one of those things where, you know, how do you take care of yourself and find the time? Um, but one thing I've come across lately that I really liked, because you don't have to change anything, but you really can take a magic herb, um, is there's a combination of a herb that's been created, and it's a combination of magnolia flower and cork bark tree. Um, one company puts it together, and they call it Relora, 
and it definitely, it's neat, because it's not, like, you know, there's many herbs that are sedating, like, you know, valerian or melatonin is a thing that you can take, different ones that can just sort of chill you out, um, chamomile, but um, this is neat, because it's, it's relaxing, but it's not sedating, and um, it definitely, uh, we had it for a couple nights, but definitely it was really neat, I, I, held, I, some, I had a friend that was on sleeping pills, and she's found relief from that because she definitely didn't want to be on the sleeping pills. But sometimes when you're in an anxiety, you're just looking for anything to take off the anxiety. So this was a nice blend. And um, it does show that after a couple weeks of using it, they've done some studies, that cortisol dropped by 37%. And the DHEA, which is a great hormone to have coursing through your body, and sometimes that declines as we get older, have more turns around the sun. There was an e increase in DHEA um, by over 200% for about 80% of the users. So 37% drop in cortisol, uh, over 200% increase in DHEA, which is like an anti-aging hormone. So that was really neat to find out. And then, um, so those are, so that's like something, because when somebody says, okay, we'll just get the stress out of your life, and you'll look 10 years younger, and it's like, okay, how do we do that? Because um, sometimes you can't even find the time to get de-stressed or to do your dry brushing and your saunas and your hot, cold baths and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's something that I found very helpful. And then the other thing is just um, what, there's a lot of supplements that are also helpful to create anti-inflammatory response in the body. But, and we'll get to all the topical stuff too. I just like to do a whole approach. Um, so one of the greatest uh, supplements that you can take is, uh, or not, you know what, not even take, actually, you can take it, but it doesn't really, it has to go through the liver, so it doesn't work as well. But if you can get glutathione is a master antioxidant, and it's actually a tripeptide. And this is like, again, as I said, it's a ma master antioxidant. So things that can boost the glutathione levels in the body is wonderful. Um, there are transdermal glutathione patches that you can use, and that way it doesn't have to go through the liver. Um, there's also some naturopaths that will do like glutathione inhalations and glutathione like IV, sort of like when you take vitamins through IV. And there's also actually a lipospheric uh, glutathione. But one of the ways to really get the glutathione going is um, by taking ALA, or what is known as alpha lipoic, alpha lipoic acid, ALA, to every health food store. And that is a super, super cool, very effective supplement to take because it is all, it's a water-soluble antioxidant and a fat-soluble antioxidant, and it can repair some damage that's already done. For example, it can pr repair um, something that's known as glycation or cross-linking. So if, um, if any of you or any of you know anybody that's had a super carbohydrate diet, sugars, high fructose corn syrup, and not very much protein, which is <laughs> kind of describing uh, the typical diet of a lot of the population in North America. So we're talking people that might be hypoglycemic, on their way to diabetes, uh, all that kind of stuff. So like a lot of junk food basically and no real food. That is a typical diet. So what happens there is that the, if I can explain this correctly, is the sugar molecules attached to the protein molecules and then kind of eat it. So what's a protein molecule would be like collagen. So we definitely don't want collagen production being taken away because we, the collagen gets less and less uh, as, as we have more turns around the sun as well. But alpha lipoic acid uh, can repair that kind of damage. So that's cool. There's something that can help regenerate. Other things that are great internally are turmeric, and any kind of antioxidants are really great. Because what happens when all those toxic cosmetics circulate in the body is that they release free radicals. So it's the same as eating junk, like processed food, junk food. It, it's releasing antioxidants in the body. And these are sending distress signals to the DNA and to the cells of your body. And it's, the cells aren't going to be replicating properly. They're not going to be replicating healthily. Um, and it's going to change their whole communication system. 
So one reason to, to keep eating totally whole food only ever all the time. Um, so that's great. Also, the other thing that happens, um, the disintegration of the protein, uh, we spoke about that right in the beginning. So the disintegration of the protein is when there's also a decline in the amino acids. The amino, amino acids also produce collagen, but it isn't their first goal. So if there's not enough of amino acids and also enough uh, good and varied amino acids, um, collagen production will also decline. So that is important as well. And um, a couple of the amino acids that are also very helpful in a beauty sense are carnitine is good and there's another one. I might have to look at my notes. Carnitine actually in all, yeah, kind of all the amino acids work together. Um, you can also just find out I don't have a source for this, but I understand there are some labs in the States where you can have your amino acid profile checked and then they can make up um, a, a, a blend for you with the amino acids. Um, but I don't have a source. You'll have to Google that one. But I know it's out there because a friend did it. So that could be very handy. And then another thing is just like obviously, I mean this comes up again and again when we talk about longevity and health in the body. It's a really healthy GI tract. Um, you know, you've got to be digesting your food and absorbing all those great proteins and minerals from your whole food diet so that it can feed your blood and feed your cells from that angle as well. The other thing is the alpha lipoic acid, the CoQ, CoQ10 is a great supplement for antioxidant for skin care for cellular health. And um, natural folic acid B3 is also really good. And vitamin C classic, it really helps to generate new skin um, tissue, so it's great. Vitamin C is always really good. Um, okay, so the other way is to, so this is how we um, reduce inflammation in the body, reduce the free radicals by not eating things that create free radicals and by not putting all the chemicals on top of our skin, which are going to enable our body to create more free radical responses. Um, I also want to talk about what turns, here we have your DNA, so what turns it on and what turns it off. Literally there are things that turn off your G DNA switches, which again would cause premature aging. And these are things we've talked about, but I will summarize, and that is um, processed food, processed food, processed food. <laughs> Um, toxic chemical cosmetics and um, stress. Stress. In a child, if um, I just remembered them, <coughs> somebody sent me once these ad campaigns, I think from the 50s, of like why it was so great to feed your baby or your toddler soda pop. It was from the, na the National, I don't know, you know, like Soda Pop Association. And I kid you not, but it was like, your, your child will grow healthy, they'll make more friends, and it was insane. But seriously, if you just if you feed like a two- or a three-year-old six tablespoons of soda pop, it will change the course of their DNA for the rest of their lives. Um, there's things in there in processed food that create excitotoxins in the brain, which basically get your cells really excited, super excited, for a short moment, and then they die off. So it creates things that are short-lived in the body, and um, so processed food, stress, and you know, processed cosmetics basically are you're asking your DNA to turn off. Now, what turns it on is joy, happy living definitely turns it on, and um, hormonal balance keeps it turned on. Antioxidants eating things like holy basil, green tea, turmeric, rosemary, those are all really great herbs that help. And, you know, luxuriating in the most lavish ingredients that the planet has to offer is all saying yes to life. Basically, that's it. It's like, you know, the DNA on-off switch is like, I'm signed up to live and live fully, or you're not. And so you're just asking for, you know, a slow turning off of life, of life force. Okay, next up, one of my favorite subjects, 
the sun. I think it's it's good to know about, but I think it also is a good summary of everything that we're talking about. Um, yeah, it's it's so crazy the story with the sun. Um, you know, we have existed for I don't know how long we've been existing for millions of years with this great sun, and the sun is responsible for all life on the planet, except for some you know, rare, well, even still, the zooplankton, the, or the, the deep, deep scattering layers of the sea. I know there are some parts that get no sunlight, um, but there's a lot of life that is responsible and grows because of the sun. And, yes, the sun, there is moments where it could age your skin more, like lying out every day for two hours at noon, for example, would create um, an issue. The other thing that's really neat, and I have been saying this for years, and, and it's, it's slowly and scientifically proven, is what are you offering the sun? So if you think of yourself out in the sun, and you're this great offering, are, you, are, are your insides like depleted in essential fatty acids? Have you got an overabundant amount of omega-6s from rancid oils, from processed soy and mazola cooking oils? Um, you know, if you are eating um, meat, is it grass-fed? Is it like, or is it all fed with like GMO corn and all of that? Because all of that changes the structure, and all of that is being fed to your cells. And then this is what you're getting. Th these are the cells you're offering the sun, and that does change the relationship to how the sun is responding and creating that precursor steroidal hormone known as vitamin D. So that's one thing that affects it. And a, a diet that's poor, um, you know, really, um, and again, has got, if you've got a lot of these rancid oils in you and a lot of anti, uh, free radicals floating around, things that are going to come up like age spots and that kind of a thing. But what also makes the sun, like the UV rays, is um, what makes it like cancerous is sunscreen itself for a number of reasons. Um, what's in sunscreen, oxybenzene, is actually a chemical that first came to discovery as a, it's in a chemical that's used um, in industrial processes to ignite things. And oxybenzene and its derivatives, there's about four different chemical derivatives that they use in sunscreen, um, becomes cancerous when exposed to sunlight. So you put that on your body several times a day. You're out in the sun for a few hours, and you keep slathering it on, and it definitely shows up in the urine. It definitely goes past the dermis level of the skin. And, um, and for a number of reasons, it becomes carcinogenic because it, um, the cell's response um, by the DNA is, a, is a, it's distressing, and they start changing their pathways. And all, really, there's a number of reasons why it's totally carcinogenic. Um, and the, uh, another, uh, actually, I had a good book I just brought. So I found this was like, if you really want to get into the science of it, this was a great book. Let's put it up here. Do, do, do. Heal Yourself with Sunlight by, there you go, Andreas Moritz. Use the sun's secret medicinal powers to help cure cancer and heart disease, blah, 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 blah. So it's a fun book. I mean, it just really goes, it's like what I'm saying in a few minutes, it just takes the time to really go into it and the studies. Um, another thing that they found, so you get this like, so you take this sort of standard American diet, processed food, put somebody under a fluorescent lamp eight hours a day, and then get them into the sun um, with their sunblock, that's pretty much a recipe for disaster. So, um, yeah, fluorescent lighting causing more um, skin uh, cells and, um, is just amazing. I, I just find that amazing. So, again, the sun is good. <laughs> the sun is healing. And where you want to be using sun uh, for healing purposes is in the early morning hours, you know, like, you know, from 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 7 a.m. when it first rises. There's a lot of uh, ancient cultures that actually look at the sun when it's rising for 40 minutes and when it's setting. And this um, feeds a lot of um, 
vitamin D3 right into the eyes is a good receptor site and into the pineal gland. So really cool things going on and apparently um, it even mineralizes the body. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go that far, although that's something I always love when I have a chance. Like why wouldn't you want to look at sunrise or sunset? So I love doing that and um, here is actually a lovely photo from sunrise where I live. One of those moments where I did get to see the sunrise. I love that. That was in August, sun rising up over the east. Ah, uh, yeah, so the sun is your friend, vitamin D is your friend, and these are your beauty friends for sure. And um, let's see, I'm sure I have a couple other notes on, excuse me one second, on sunscreen. Okay, just to round it up, sunscreen. Sunscreen, it uh, generates free radicals and um, it damages the, the, so when sunscreen on the skin is exposed to UVA, it damages the DNA through lipid oxidization, it oxidizes all your amino acids, creates free radicals which equal cell damage, it uh, creates estrogenic activity, um, it gets stored in the lipid layers of the body. Um, which is the fat cells, so that's where a lot of chemicals get stored, and it also oxidizes enzymes, so it's not so pretty. And uh, oh, here's a fun one too. It causes genetic damage to the DNA and in the skin cells during its exposure to sunlight, and some re researchers, I got this out of what was, book was this, Emotional Intelligence? or ecological intelligence, probably ecological intelligence. Um, so that what the, they have studied is that 4,000 to 6,000 metric tons of sunscreen are getting washed off swimmers every year. That um, it's to some extent about 10% of coral reefs are getting bleached to death, like just like they become skeletal structures. So not so good for the ocean and you know and it's just new just wear a hat <laughs> okay just want to make sure we covered everything on the sun yeah okay so now I sure wish we could all hear I could hear y'all and we could have a conversation but that's okay here's something fun I did um I don't normally even look at other other cosmetic ingredients um, but I was doing a little bit of research and um, for a talk that I'm doing coming up on the WISH International Women's Summit on Health you can just look up WISH and um, it was such a fun interview and um, what we did was we wanted to just go into a couple ingredients more and I would just went on to the um, or what is it the Skin Deep database? I'm sorry, I can't even remember now, but I think that's it. And uh, this one just came up immediately. I'm not sure why. And it was a deodorant. And I, I, it's a deodorant that I've heard of. It's a deodorant that's a health food store. And it's like a popular, I'd say, health brand that I didn't e even know was that bad. And it's a wild rose deodorant. And I was amazed at the ingredients. And so I've highlighted some here also as an educational exercise so that we can also learn... Um, learn about labels and learn about sort of uh, just sort of decipher the code a little bit more. Um, so the first ingredient is alcohol and most peop most ingredients that are using alcohol is not a real alcohol or a grain alcohol. Um, we have a perfume that uses alcohol and it's a special one. It's called Fawn Lily and for example we get a biodynam biodynamically grown grape seed alcohol so it's totally pure and it is not um, from a synthesized alcohol. Because those isopropyl alcohols, they can be quite caustic to the skin, dangerous. And if any of you are familiar with Hilda Clark's work, she is pretty sure that the isopropyl alcohols hatch, if there's any parasites in the body, that they also help to hatch the eggs more. And so it creates more paras paras parasites in the body and just helps, helps all that bad bacteria flourish more. Um, so there's alcohol, water, we also have perfumes that are just with spring water, but anyway. And then fragrance is a key one. Fragrance is not an essential oil, 
And um, that's why I highlighted these other ones in green. Just I highlighted the questionable ingredients in yellow and then the green to show you because at the end you'll see it says from natural essential oils. Um, but limoline, which would be from a lemon, linalool, citronella, and then further down, I'm sorry, citronellol, and then further down you'll see geraniol, citral, eugenol, and farsenol. All of those once were from essential oil, but they're so derived from an essential oil, and they're so isolated and synthesized, and um, they probably have a petroleum base in them as well. And so they are not the real thing. They are not an essential oil. Um, another example of that would be menthol. Menthol is um, what, you know, would come from peppermint, but is not a, an essential oil. So that is uh, just to sort of educate you from there. And then there's benzyl alcohols, benzyl benzoate, benzyl salicylate. I don't even know how to say all these, but... Um, these are definitely things that you do not want to be putting in your armpit. And I have, I highlighted that one because I was just amazed at this brand because I thought it was probably a pretty good band. They make baby oil and stuff, but anyway. Okay, then next up we have a, this is an example of a certified organic face cream with CoQ10. And what's interesting about certified organic products is that for cosmetics, they can be 70% organic. And so, for example, a cream is it's about 70% water. And then water and oil are emulsified together, kind of like mayonnaise. And that's the, basis, that's the basis for all creams. So what a lot of cosmetic companies that are getting certified organic products do is they do a water base that can be certified organic. So this one is organic lavender, chamomile, uh, white tea, arnica. So those are the things. So it's kind of like if you were to make a tea at home with those ingredients, like a herbal tea, and then you made it with organic products, and then that would be your water part of the, of the whole thing. So you'd have a 70% water in there, but you have like a 70% herbal tea. And then that is getting you your organic certification. And then the other 30% can be whatever, but really, I mean, methylparaben only has to be used 1% in a product. It's a synthetic preservative. So even if it was like 99% organic and then 1% methylparaben, that wouldn't be cool either because also, I mean, most of us know that when toxins show up, I mean, we're really talking parts per billion that can, that can often be damaging to the fat cells stored in the body and that kind of thing. Um, and then just some other ingredients that um, I wouldn't want to be putting on my body was the glycer glycerol stearate, acetyl alcohol, sodium hydrolonate, which um, that, like for example, that ingredient is probably also got other ingredients, but they don't have to be listed. It's probably being preserved with sodium benzoate. Um, oh, then the sunflower seed oil. I'm not, I didn't mean to highlight that. That's not so bad. Um, then, uh, then all those other ones. Polysorbate 20 is, is not a good, like that's a totally synthetic emulsifier, and so on and so forth. So there's your organic product with CoQ10. <laughs> and then there is, of course, a little bergamot at the end and other essential oils. And that's an interesting thing, too. Often the beauty industry, if they are using essential oils, it's sort of like this like sprinkling in there, a bit of an afterthought. Um, but the way that we use essential oils, we use them because they're potent and they are active. Um, they are more expensive to put in, but really, they're the healers. They're helping correct cells. They're, they're more, you know, they're more than just like a pretty smell to add at the end of a product. And they're also, when you use them in the correct proportion and in, uh, in, in strong amounts to make them part of the thing. Like uh, when I'm making skincare things, I don't think of like a base and then I'm going to add any essential oils. I think of the whole thing. It's like I don't want any filler in there. I want that whole thing to be working and active and to be working towards, you know, whatever it's supposed to be doing as a serum or uh, soothing the skin. So it's like the whole product, every, you know, every corner of the product, so to speak, is 
to have a function and a purpose. Um, so that's the way I love using essential oils. And when you do use them in proper proportions, they're antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral. So they can actually contribute to your synthetic free preservative system. I use a sage and rosemary antioxidants along with essential oils, and they are often enough to stop microbes from growing in the product. And then it's also about using really good quality oils that don't need preservation like jojoba or virgin coconut oil. Okay, this is a fun one too. This is a label from a cosmeceutical, <laughs> like high-tech skincare, dermatologically tested, and it's $495 for half an ounce. So I was like, wow, maybe it works. But then I was like, oh my god, I wouldn't even try it. So, um... I can't even read all these things. C1215 alkyl benzoate, butylene, glycol, dimethyl MEA, uh, la 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 la, glycerin, glycerol stearate, PEG100 stearate, not good at all. I mean, cetyl alcohols, and we could talk hours, and we could go break down each of these, and you could see that they are not things you want to be having your body process. Um, and so on, ceramide 2, PEG10, uh, uh, beta-glucan. Um, the one thing that I did see in here, though, which was the, here it is, after the asorbyl palmitate, <laughs> um, is the um, oligopeptide, if I'm saying that correctly, and that's where I would thought, oh, that's interesting, because that's probably what's actually giving some results to uh, the person using it. So remember in the beginning we talked about using things that could like keep the water, summon the water in the body to keep the skin in its lipid luxuriousness? And so that ingredient is actually used in like, um, you know, like a lip plumper or different things like that that plump up the skin. And so it would have an effect on... Um, fine lines and wrinkles, because you would have a temporary plumping effect in the skin, so to speak. So I thought that was interesting. And then again, that has like perfume fragrance, so that they're not even trying to use any real essential oils. So I imagine it doesn't smell so great either. So that was the great $500. Basically, like, just buying a little thing of vial of chemicals. It's, it's amazing. Um, okay, so then I thought why I could tell you about um, how I wash my face <laughs> or how I take care of my skin, and it's really not that serious. But beautiful skin is really easy. Less is always better, and um, it doesn't have to be com complicated. And definitely you want to do things that allow the skin and the cells to renew themselves. And obviously something that's key to that is whole foods and uh, eating properly for sure. And then um, when you think of bathing and stuff, it's really it's not really about getting clean. I'll tell you a secret. It's not about getting clean at all. It's just about um, it's about relaxing, and it's also about just circulation. It's really about the lymph system. And so if you are able to dry brush before you um, bathe or shower, that's excellent. So just remember keeping circulation going, and that will keep your cheeks rosy. Um, and the things like sweat glands and hair follicles and pores and skin cell turnover, all of these things are your friend uh, when, when it's about natural beauty. They're definitely not things that need to be controlled or tampered with or improved upon. So um, some of the first things to do when you are, uh, if you need to, I'm sure many of you are already totally using natural things anyway, <laughs> And um, but one you got to do is you want to allow the skin to rejuvenate and you want to restore. Let's just say, or I'll go back in my head to when I was 16 and, and using the um, Erno Laszlo or Full Clinique regime of like oh I can't even remember, but all those steps. And when I go back to that time and what I know now is that really you got to you want to stop all that because you want to allow the skin to reju rejuvenate itself. And um, the there's sort of three things here, and I'm also going to get some of my 
arithmetic right here. But the, the things we want to do is we want to um, recover the integrity of the skin's outer layer. So this stuff that everybody sees, we want to recover, and that's called the stratum corneum. What is that? Is that it? Stratum corneum? Yeah. I never went to aesthetic school, so I didn't learn each part of the, the skin layer. But that's the outer layer. And then the next layer is the lipid barrier. Um, and that's where we were talking about, too, where you can you know, through the use of serums, that's actually where something topical can improve your skin. And um, that's the precious layer that keeps the water together and the fat together. And definitely that's the anti-wrinkle layer. And it's the layer that keeps out harmful toxins because that's the whole point of your skin is to keep out the harmful toxins. And there we go with our very own hands applying toxic chemicals for the skin. It's crazy, crazy times that we're living in. Um, and then you want to also recover the skin's immune system. So the immune system of the skin is that layer called the acid mantle, which is the crazy layer that gets stripped with like, for example, those isopropyl face toners and all that kind of stuff. So those are the keys that you want to if you have been using other products where you would just want to really think about those layers and allow them to breathe and allow them to get renewed and allow them to do their work. So, I mean, we never have to wake up. Well, sometimes we might wake up and think we have to help our liver, especially if we're hungover, but it's not like we wake up going, okay, i got to help my body breathe today. And so you think of all these ways that you're going to like contort and do all these weird things to help you breathe or help your blood flow through your body or different things like that. So just to remember that with your skin, it's just like letting it be and letting it do. It's just magic that it's supposed to do. Um, so I got some things in here. What do I do? Oh, I forgot a key, key ingredient. The sea bucks are in best skin ever. Okay, I'll have to like pretend with something can't believe that. Okay. So, um, the this top layer is like the gatekeeper for your beautiful for beautiful skin, and that's the uh, that that contains a great antibacterial level as well. I mean, imagine this all day long, and you're not thinking about this, you're not processing this, processing this, but something comes into contact with your skin, and your body, so magical, so finely tuned. It's deciding what to do with that information, and it's sending messages and different physiological processes to deal with the information and to rebalance. So you may have just warded off something you don't even know. You may have already taken care of like some superbug virus because your skin was in such great condition and it wasn't allowing these things to go through. Um, in ancient Ayurvedic practices, they do they have this technique of oiling the body every day. And of course it's pure oil. It's not a you know a barrel of petroleum oil. And they, it does help the body and the lipid la layers and um, protect the water balance in the skin. So that's the first um, layer, the outer layer. Then there's the hydrolipid barrier, which we talked about. And that's something that totally gets damaged with detergents, sodium lauryl sulfate, um, too much exfoliating, uh, too many dermal peel things that you can go spend lots of money on. Like that, it does peel away a layer of skin and then reveal obviously like a younger a younger cell structure, but those cells are too young to be exposed, and then you've just peeled off the, the stratum corneum, which is your total antibacterial layer. That's really not a good thing to do. So you want to like, you know, the, when your cells are turning over properly, you're really not going to have to exfoliate your face much more than washing with a face cloth anyway, and when you're eating healthy as well. And then, um, you don't want to also, uh, oh, let me get, I had a really good sentence here. Um, oh, yeah, so if you're taking that, like, Clinique thing, for example, and you're stripping your skin, what happens is then the sebum production has to, like, counterbalance, and it reacts by creating too much from the lipid layer, and this throws off the whole balance and the oil balance and the moisture balance. And then this can create um, blemishes to come out if your blemishes aren't due to... Um, hormonal or digestive issues, this can create acne as well. And it creates other inflammatory issues that can come up. You know, sometimes if there's a patch on your skin and you're like, I don't even know what that is. Um, it's not really an acne, it. it's just this thing. Um, so that can happen because it's this overreaction of the skin. 
And um, when the surface of the skin gets too dried up and it's deprived of its own lubrication, then the blemishes can also sometimes they can stop moving around and they just wait and they wait. And then when they come out, they hurt a lot. Um, so they can they remain suspended for prolonged periods of time. So that's, that's why you don't use soap and water to wash your face. I mean, even sometimes people are trying to be simple, like all those dove people. <laughs> Um, you just don't be a soap and water person. You just don't even need soap, not even in the bath. And um, you definitely don't want to be using, like, all those foaming cleansers and everything. It really throws the whole balance off. And it also throws the skin's acid mantle off, which is like the skin's immune system. So things like sweat and mature skin cells are not the enemy of the skin. They're fine. They're fine. And they have their place. So the bacteria and the sebum, they all work together. And um, they protect the skin from, like, foreign invaders, foreign bacteria. And um, if, we, if we use harsh detergents and alcohols, we can actually obliterate the acid mantle. And you're kind of left without protection, which isn't good. So that's like things with like, um, things are antiseptic, things with propylene glycol, um, petroleum minerals, they can just totally dry out the skin because they, like that petroleum, they talked about that saran wrap layer, that blocks the sebum production from interacting with the top layer of the skin. Um, so those aren't good. And oh yeah, chlorine, chlorine. If you can, you know, I really suggest, um, when we used to live in the city, we couldn't get a whole house uh, water filter because we, we didn't. We just were renting, and so we invested in um, a shower filter. Was great, and we even drank our water from that. And I don't, you know, I'm so out to date, out out to whatever. I don't, not up to date on um, what kind of water filter to buy at all. But do your research and do get one because if you're continually battling uh, the whole chlorine situation and you are having skin challenges or hair challenges or even respiratory challenges, this could be one of your key things because chlorine is just stripping the skin, the hair, and also um, it can cause respiratory issues and it can also um, take a toll on the kidneys, which can also lead to like puffy eyes and dark circles under the eyes. So definitely you want to get a, a shower filter. And um, what we would do too is we would just, when we had a bath, we just turn on the shower and let it fill up that way. So that's pretty key and pretty key for your skin's acid mantle uh, to stay health, healthy and happy. And um, so so often people really, they'll be like, well, how do you wash your face? Because our, our creations, we don't have foaming cleansers and all that kind of stuff. And for years, for like pretty much 20 years, this is how I've been washing my face, but I forgot it, the ingredient. But anyway, we'll just imagine. Um, so I, I just take a cloth. Here it is. And it's, I learned about this from this ancient gypsy, like, folklore. Not a folklore book, but just on, like, all these herbal techniques that these gypsies had and how they would wash their face in the desert and stuff. And I tried it, and it really works. Um, I also have a little video on YouTube that describes this. So um, you have your cloth. Why well, this a nice organic hemp face cloth? And you put water on it. I have a rose water tonic here, which is just rose water and a few essential oils. So great for the skin. Um, and I'd wet it. Or you could have just like some spring water there. And then, now we're going to pretend this is the sea bucks are in best skin ever. <laughs> and I would just squirt some oil on there, just like that, one squirt. And then I would wash my face. Or maybe you know what I'll do, because I would do this. If I didn't have my oil, I would take a little bit of my cream and wash my face with the cream. Okay, so, so we've got on the wet spot of the cloth some oil, and then you just do your whole face, and you wash it. And this even takes off if you wear any makeup or anything. We've got quite some actresses that have to wear lots of makeup and they do it this way, and it takes it all off. So there you go. And then what you can do is uh, you can either just spray your face again, or you can wet the cloth more, and then you just kind of do a rinse one. 
Then you take the best skin ever again, put a squirt on your fingers, and then you just apply one drop, like that's seriously one squirt, one drop all over your face. Um, and then if it's that, and you know what, and that could be it, and that would be end of story. That's all you need, one bottle of the best skin ever, and you're done. And you can use that for your entire body. And that could be as simple as that. But we also like making lots of things. Not lots, but, you know, really, it's fun to make creams. And also, you know, they are beautiful. There's a thing where there's a super, superfluous level to cosmetics. Um, but there's also, like, a beautiful part where really in what beauty is is kind of when you forget yourself and when you're really having fun. And you can play with beauty. And, um, and that's when beauty is sort of like a revelation and it's not a drag, because you're like trying to be something that you're not. Um, so then you can also take the cream, and then you could you can combine it together on your hand, or just apply to the skin. This is the rose cream, which I love combining with the sea buckthorn oil or the rose glow serum, because especially in the winter months, you get you just get that deeper level of uh, moisture. And then sometimes I'll take something like the Cellular Renewal, which is like an aloe-based. I've got aloe vera with like cr a crazy amount of beautiful essential oils like frankincense and shishandra and rose auto and immortelle. And, um, oh, I had a piece of aloe. Hold on, where are there? It is. Okay. So the aloe, I've got the rose Cellular Renewal and the grapefruit Cellular Renewal. Um, and it's made from fresh fillet aloe vera, if you can see this. Oh, you can see the knife. And we also keep an aloe vera plant at home. Where's the camera? There. And you can also just, like, we have one, and it, like, provides so much aloe that you could literally do it every day. There. And then you just take a, take a piece of that. And... Put that on top. Just mix it in. So good. Mix it in with the cream and the oil. And then what I might do, and then I would just do things like a little bit of lip balm. <laughs> Let's see if I had a, a zit or some weird thing. I'd take my doodab, go, oh, oh, or if that, sometimes people get those tiny little veins around their nose. That's what doodab's great for as well. And then, I, this is like what I do every day. And then I take some Made in Firm Blushing Balm, which is right here, which is made with roots. It's a red tint. And then I just go like this, this, a little on my lips. It's not really showing up here. You know what? It really isn't that strong either. It just adds like a red tint. Maybe I would add eye cream, and that's fun. Well, you know, I actually did a photo shoot the other day, and what I discovered was this eye cream is so good if they put makeup on you because it mixes in really well. And as many of you may know, if you are wearing some kind of makeup, if your skin is at all dry, it looks pretty crazy. So um, mix that right in with the concealer, and it was amazing for the photo shoot. And that's like, that is it. So <laughs> that is the extent of the skincare regime. It's like that, and you know what I love? It's so easy to travel with. And um, it's refreshing. It's renewing. Just that simple act of the cloth and the oil. It help, helps people get rid of acne. It rebalances their skin. It, I mean, I get, I do. I'm so thankful. I get le beautiful letters every day. It's like, thank you. My skin's so much better. Oh, another fun thing with the best skin ever is that if you really want to treat yourself um, or you have the time, it's like not that big of a treat. To me, time is more of a treat. So you just take the same thing. or Right when you get out of the bath or shower and your body's still wet, you take your cloth and you put on the more of the best skin ever, a couple squirts, and then you do this, what you did to your face, to your whole body. And your skin will be entirely amazing and soft and you'll feel like you have a new fresh, fresh, fresh outlook on life. Okay. 
So now I thought we would go through some of my favorite essential oils for skincare. Um, right now we have uh, peppermint and turmeric up on the screen, and peppermint is great. Um, it's from one like one essential oil I don't think I would ever leave home without because of its anti-inflammatory properties and literally cooling. So it's anti-inflammatory and you can feel it. So it's good for bites and bugs and stings and um, you know, it cools down the eyes. It just really is anti-inflammatory. And um, it's great for freshening breath as well. Um, Turmeric is also an amazing, amazing antioxidant. It's also very good at regenerating skin cells. And um, we have that in our Soothsayer Serum and a number of other products because it really is quite healing. It can also, the oil is a super critical extract and can also be used internally. And if there's any way you can get turmeric into your diet every day, that would be an amazing, um, amazing thing to do for your antioxidant skincare regime. Regime, it's not a regime. But it's a thing. Okay, this is um, Immortelle. Is such a beautiful oil. I get that from Corsica, and there's two lovely sisters that distill it, and um, it runs out every year. It's a very rare, well, it's not rare, it just doesn't yield a lot, and so I actually, I have a standing reservation with my distillers for the past 15 years, and some years I'll get a liter, and some years I'll get eight ounces, which isn't very much, considering I also put it into all of our all of our skincare items pretty much are with it, all of the rose products and everything, and Immortal is quite amazing at healing scars, and it's great for blemishes and herpes. It's um, you know it can be used undiluted on the skin. You can use one drop, and um, it's very good for regenerating old scar, like to ge regenerate the tissues from an old scar or new skin scar. It's good for stretch marks. Um, it can also be blended with other oils and uh, like Rosato, frankincense, I have a, put it in a blend called Doodab, and we have it in our rose serum. It's just really a favorite, and it really is a great cell regenerator. Sandalwood. Sandalwood is one of my favorite ones for using as a deodorant, but for skin care, it's amazing, actually, um, and this I've just learned in the past couple of years. I did I did use it in skincare before, but I wouldn't say quite as much as I would like Rosado or Immortelle. Um, but it's really good because in the past couple of years, some studies have been done, and they're studying, um, you know, once there is sun damage um, or damage caused by a sunscreen in the sun or just too many times getting burnt in the sun, um, what can be do what can be done to correct the cells and the cellular message messages so the cell sandalwood the alpha santal is very good for correcting the path and what's that is known as the uh, malvolent pathway so when when a, when uh, skin cells are starting to um, you know not die off properly and uh, sometimes, and they're getting irregular, that's when um, a skin cell can start going down a path that could be precancerous. And what about three studies show is that it, start, it, can, it, can, it can prevent that, it can stop it, it can stop it and re reroute it. So sandalwood is, is really uh, a wonderful ingredient and we use that qu uh, quite a high amount in our Soothsayer Serum. And... Ah, uh, yeah, okay, one of my favorites um, is sea buckthorn, and that I've been including in my skin care since 1994 because it is so truly amazing. It is, it's got over 190 substances in it, and again, this is where, like, you know, in, um, in like, that other world of skin care, they'll add, like, vitamin E and different things like that, but this is so rich in it and naturally occurring. It's amazing. Let me actually just list off what's in it because it's so so many things I can't remember. All I remember is that it's good. Okay, <laughs> so it contains over um, see. contains over 190 bioactive substances, naturally occurring vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, potent antioxidants. It's anti-inflammatory. It contains flavonoids, tocopherols, carotenoids, omega-3, 6, 7, and 9. 
and in perfect ratios. And omega-7 assists with skin repair, cell regeneration. It has seven phytoster 17 phytosterols, 41 carotenoids, all of the isonomers of vitamin E. It regenerates cells. It softens dry skin and protects against cell water loss, and it, it quenches internal inflammation. Um, it also is 20, um, it's about 20% in oleic and linoleic acids, which are good acids. Um, they're anti-inflammatory. Um, co virgin coconut oil also contains those. And um, it's great, and you can totally use it internally. And I love things that you can drink and p apply to your skin. Um, a client of mine says that somebody's putting it on a part of their hair that's thinning, and they're growing hair there. I can't promise that, but, I'm, that, but that's a very close client of mine that says that. So um, the sea buckthorn is also in everything that we have. It's kind of a, a, a steady partner for skincare for me. Um, so I just love it, and it's really getting more popular now in different, in different skincare products, but we also love using an amount that's really potent. And um, next we have Rose Auto, which is the steam distilled rose, which is different than the Rose Absolute, which is used more for perfumery. And Rose Auto is truly divine and um, a great cell regenerator, very, very antioxidant. It's actually next to clove in its antioxidant um, protective properties. And um, it's also good for fine lines and um, generate, regenerates new skin cells, good for scars and stretch marks as well. So that is the Rose Auto. And we also have another favorite of mine, which is frankincense. And there is a beautiful frankincense tree. Frankincense is a sap from inside that tree. And frankincense is an amazing cell regenerator. And um, it's also anti-tumor. It's anti-cancerous. Um, there was a study where they actually put uh, frankincense, injected it into tumors, and they went away. And topically, it was applied to tumors, and they shrunk. Um, it's been great. Uh, it's anti-oral cancer, um, so it's good for people that chew the resin if they have any signs of oral cancer. There's been some studies on that. Um, yeah, it's a cell. It's a, these are all cell regenerators. These are some of the most potent ones. There's um, you know, a number of essential oils I could have also talked about. I just thought um, they're a little more common, like lavender, tea tree. These are all great. I love putting tea tree under my under my nails because they keep them clean and white. Now that's a fun tea tree tri trick. And and lavender's great. It again helps cell um, generate cells. It's silophilic, meaning it helps to generate cells. It's also good for scarring and and all that stuff. So um, each of the essential oils contribute to skin care, and then it's also about what the skin care is going in and how it's being applied. Um, but I just love these ingredients, and they're, they're just um, each ingredient, like frankincense, is this whole world of, um, it just, it's a whole world of, like each, each molecule, each drop contains over 300, 500 diff different biochemical components. So they're so rich, and they so have a relationship. We have such a good relationship with plants. They so work with our cell receptors, our skin cells. That it, it, I, I just think it's such a celebration of like what the off earth can offer and what it does offer us to be and to experience beauty. And, you know, all those things that, we, uh, that I can't even pronounce. I mean, we just don't even need to partake in that world because there is a fine, fine banquet going on. And um, using these ingredients is great for the earth as well. So, so there's like a, a gift from the earth. It's great to use them. And, um, and I just love creating with them. And I'm so thankful that I get to have that as my palette. So I am going to take questions now. So if you haven't written any, go ahead. I'm going to pop up that screen. And we have one glass of water. And here we go. Okay.
just waiting for the screen to pop up. Okay, great. Okay. So from Erica, we have, Hi Nadine, thanks for your time. I have strong underarm odor and nothing works except antiperspirant. Sometimes I have to use a hand sanitizer to help it. What do you recommend? Well, that is a great question. And you know, honestly, obviously, uh, some of my solutions are going to come from things I make, and I'm sure you're all fine with that. Because I really have thought about, sometimes on things for over 20 years, about what's going to work and what's not going to work. And I use everything on myself. So, you know, and I, I need deodorant too. So I'm going to come up with a good solution. And seriously, we, we make these beautiful things called underarm charms or poetic pits. And they work fantastically. Whether you're a huge man that is like doing construction work and sweating all day, or um, we have some actresses that sweat on set and under those hot lights, and everybody finds it effective. Um, and the great thing is they will last until your next shower. And uh, so some people shower every other day and they're fine, and you use one roll. And the great thing is, like, I had tried lots of ones from uh, health food stores. I try essential oils and water and different things, and it just really wasn't working in a way to be confident. Oh, and I just got a letter from a personal trainer. Or she had just called the other day, and Ron talked to her. And she is so thankful because she had, she had such issues because she's a personal trainer. She's sweating, and she's a natural person, and she's like, and I had to use Arid, like, just so she could work and not be embarrassed. So... Um, I, you know, I get that thing. You need confidence to know that you're going to smell good. So it's the Poetic Pits. I think we have six or seven of them. They're on our website. And the secret is, is that they are made of sandalwood plus other essential oils. So it's mainly sandalwood, which is so cool. This is how I thought of it because we release, in our apocrine guns, in our armpits, we le release um, the steroidal hormones of androsterone, and sandalwood has a phytoandrosterone. I thought, I thought they're a good pair, and they really are. And um, so there's nothing diluting it. There's no carrier oil. There's no water. It's pure essential oils, which is kind of what's neat and crazy about it because nobody would do that. <laughs> nobody would put all essential oils in a roll-on and then market it as deodorant, but we do because we're kind of crazy. So Debbie says, what is the name of that herb again? I think she's referring to the reloria, which is a magnolia flower and cork bark. And I think reloria is like a trade name it goes under. Um, so um, can we eat herbs fresh or dried? Do we absorb them well that anyway? Or is tea better? Um, well, that's a great question. And it depends on the herb, the preparation, and what the end use is. So... Um, they're, it's great. Basil, fresh basil in your salad is great. Dried basil in a tea is great. I say use herbs. We use herbs like vegetables. So um, we don't really eat lettuce, but we'll eat coriander and basil as our greens. Um, then, what is wrong with, <laughs> I can't even really read that, phospholidylylcholine. Well, you know what? I just know it's a chemical. I'd have to actually check in on it. But, I mean, if it's a toxic ingredient, your body has to process it. It's totally foreign to your, your body, and it would take its toll on your cells, on your DNA, on your endocrine system, and on your liver. So, um, can we practice oiling our skin with olive oil, a high-quality olive oil? Yes, of course, a high-quality olive oil would be beautiful. Absolutely. Do you remember a bit of wetness on the cloth really helps? It kind of creates um, the action, the water and the oil, plus the action of you um, doing the rubbing is like you're making your own sort of emulsification on your skin. Um, what is one drop of the turmeric essential oil equivalent to in a dry amount? That is a great question. And you know what? I don't, I don't know off the top of my head exactly the amount, but I would say... It is up to a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Um, like, for example, it takes 40 rose heads to make one drop of oil. Um, so that's a good question. I might ask. I'll, I'll ask my distiller. Um, but definitely it's potent and because some essential oils vary. They're either 100 to 1,000 times more concentrated than the plant matter. Um, what is the best way to deal with stretch marks from weight loss, weight, weight gain? Well, the C, buckthorn, best skin ever 
is excellent for that and you could also the ingredients in it are great and that has prevented a lot of stretch marks for people and also help them go away um, if they're deep and you might want to just add um, palmarosa and lavender to get to your bottle of sea buckthorn basking ever just to like pot potentiate it a bit more and um, what are the best essential oils and how to use them to deal with parasites internally? Well, that's a pretty in-depth question and um, there's some great books on that, Advanced Aromatherapy and Medical Aromatherapy that will go into more into recipes and stuff. There's also a Hulda Clark recipe for tapeworms and parasites. Um, and all the ones that are really good for that are, are like, you know, the very anti-parasitical oils like oregano, um, clove, cinnamon, those are, are very strong and um, there's recipes and ways that you can dilute them before you ingest them. They definitely need to be diluted and put into capsules and stuff. Actually, I did uh, a bit of a talk on medical aromatherapy last month. It's probably up in the archives. And on our site, we have archives that, um, that have a lot of talks on them. If you go to our Living Libations library on livinglibations.com. And, oh my God, I forgot, for all of you that are still listening, we have a free shipping coupon code till um, this Thursday at midnight. It's Tuesday right now. And um, it is for orders over $150. And that's also because shipping can be anywhere from $15 to $45. So um, it's $150 and there is free shipping for you. So there's your bonus for hanging out. Um, what is the name of the oil you wash your face with? How do you spell it, please? Alberta, the name of the face wash is um, Sea Buckthorn, S-E-A-B-U-C-K-T-H-O-R-N, Sea Buckthorn, best skin ever. And the next question, I'm curious which face wash and face cream do you use? Well, Annie, again, I use only things that I make, and all of our products are on livinglibations.com, and I use our Sea Buckthorn Best Skin Ever, and then I will moisturize with either the Rose Glow Cream or the Rose Glow Serum. You'll also see other options. We have a Maverick Face Cream with Sandalwood and Frankincense. We've got the All Seeing Eye Cream, and there's so many beautiful options. I just really, I love making everything, and I make them all with organic ingredients. And um, I'm just glad so many people like it because it gives me an excuse to make everything. <laughs> um, somebody's asking they have oily hair, which they do. And, you know, that brings up a good point. Like, whether you have oily hair or oily skin, the whole thing is you've got to bring it back into balance. Um, I make a luxurious shampoo, but I don't make, you know, shampoo for oily hair, dry hair, and all that. Because when you use the shampoo and it doesn't have chemicals in it, your hair is going to come back into balance. And uh, we have a beautiful sea buckthorn shampoo. And just getting the next one. What kind of sh shower filter you suggest? Well, I did uh, say that I am not up to date on shower filters, but do something that removes the chlorine and different chemicals. Um, and the product, again, for the cortisol levels was uh, the product that's made with magnolia flower and cork bark, and it's called Reloria, which is R-E-L-O-R-A. What is a good body moisturizer to use? Again, the Sea Buckthorn Best Skin Ever will it'll do your whole body. I like to take things simple, and you'll find that this is an amazing thing for moisturizing your face, washing your face, taking care of your body. I do also make a body cream. All, and it's called Sea Buckthorn Oliver Lotion. You can tell I love the Sea Buckthorn. And we also make a beautiful range of, um, of body care products as well, and they're called the best skin ever. We have one with chocolate, like real chocolate in there, one with vanilla. We have one called Lavish Abundance Best Skin Ever, which is so beautiful, their body. I make it with fresh infused jasmine flowers and lavender and lime and a fresh infused vanilla. And it's got to be one of the most exotic, beautiful body oils. It's just it's very, very popular. We also have love butters and love lotions, too, that people use to moisturize their body. Um, let me get the last question. 
could I list the products I use one more time? Oh, okay, well, again, I use anything from my site, but I use the Sea Buckthorn Best Skin Ever. Here we have the uh, Rose, wait, Rose Glow Cream. We've got the Rose Complexion Tonic. And I've got also the just picking up what trying to find it the eye cream here is like you can look inside there show you the rose cream this I love the color of this one look at that beautiful pink tones if you can see that and you know what I'll do sometimes I'll take the face cream and I'll put it all over my body on special occasions and um I was trying to think if I had anything else in there, but those are the ones I can show you. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm going back to the last question. Um, what can you do for sunspots and brown spots? Um, one thing is to just check in on your hormones, make sure they're balanced, and um, stop using synthetic sunscreen. But for that one spot, I'll have one soon, but I'll have a, a zinc oxide sunscreen block soon, which will just help if you do need to stay out in the sun and protect your nose. But do block that so if you are out in the sun so it doesn't get worse, but with something that's a natural zinc oxide. Um, and then, I haven't tried it personally, but I because this comes up a lot for people, age spots and um, melasma, where the skin gets discolored, hyperpigmentation. And a lot of women are having success with the doodab over about a month or two, like three to six weeks. Also, up your intake of vitamin D. D3, about 10,000 uh, you a day, that will also help. And and definitely, um, you know, eliminate all uh, rancid oils and, um, you know, all that kind of mazola, soybean oil stuff. Definitely eliminate that from your diet. And do make sure you're getting enough omega-3 oils. That will help age spots and hyperpigmentation because I see that's coming up soon, a question of hyperpigmentation. And for broken capillaries, you need circulation. So dry brush your body. Don't dry brush the broken capillaries, but start dry brushing the body. And um, then for the broken capillaries, use the doodad right on there. Often um, they're here or around the face, and you just apply the doodad. And... What is our website for more information? Gary, our website is www.livinglibations.com. That's living, L-I-V-I-N-G, libations, L-I-B, like boy, that's L-I-B-A-T-I-O-N-S dot com. And what would I recommend to calm rosacea? Well, again, rosacea is an inflammatory response from inside the body. So you'll definitely want to see like what is inflamed inside the body. If you are having any blood work done, a test that you can take to check in on your inf um, inflammatory levels or your inflammatory response in the body is called C-reactive protein. So if you are having blood work done, you can get that checked and see if it's high or low. So again, rosacea is an inflammatory response and you just want to look at diet and nutrition. Um, but the Rose Glow Serum, has been very helpful for people with rosacea. That's the Rose Glow Serum and washing with the sea buckthorn best skin ever. And next question is, uh, what about oily skin? Anything different? No, it's the same thing, especially the sea buckthorn best skin ever will totally help because what's happening is the sebum and the acid mantle are off. So you definitely want to stick to really pure products to get that regenerated. You know, and the whole thing with like oily T-zones and this area is dry and that area is oily, it really doesn't need to exist and we don't want to be treating them separately. Um, will bergamot help dry oily patches on my skin? No, I wouldn't use bergamot on its own in that way. Just, um, you know, use something like the best skin ever with sea buckthorn oil and um, and then like the rose, a rose cream, and it will it will heal. And you know what I do sometimes actually, if I have a really just dry patch in the middle of winter, I'll actually use one of my lip balms, and I'll just put that right on, and it will clear up in about a second. So it's good other uses for lip balm. Um, 
I, from KEW, I have acne, and my healthy superfood diet and lifestyle doesn't help. My hormone levels have come back normal. I just went through a whole ser series of clinics. Any thoughts as to what could be going on? Well, that is a great question, and it's great that you're trying all these different things. Um, it sounds like you're probably aware, and you are using natural products, but I would definitely um, be sure that you are using natural products. And the other thing is like checking in to see if there's any candida going on, and um, probably the colonics would have helped, but you might just want to do a specific liver cleanse. And then looking into um, just some supplements like alpha lipoic acid and one other was coming up, and some B3. Uh, Erica, thanks, you're awesome. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> um, I turned tuned in at 7.03 and you were underway. Not sure how much you missed. Uh, just so you know, Chris, you only missed like two, sec two minutes. <laughs> and our website is livinglibations.com. I'm sure you've heard it by now. Um, Okay, hi Nadine. I have to avoid grapefruit because of interaction with my medication and wonder if you have any skincare products that do not contain grapefruit. Yes, we have a lot of products that don't contain grapefruit, um, like all of our Rose Glow products and our Maverick face cream and the Lavish Abundance Best Skin Ever and so on. There's tons of options. Uh, what do you suggest for old scarring? I would suggest, you know, you could get Immortel and Rosado and you could buy them separately, but Catherine, for your question, I would just get some of the doodab because it's all ready to go and you could just keep applying that to the scar. You know, it'll take a couple weeks, but you'll see a change. And then once you're past the, do like, you'll add the doodab for a while. This is also for fresh scars too. Use the doodab until it gets dry and if it's a fresh scar that it's closed. And then once it's closed, then start adding um, the Soothsayer Serum or the Rose Glow Serum to that process. And it, it will clear up and you'll get the keloids smaller. Okay, so again, the website, I'm sure it's been heard by now, but it's livinglibations.com. What is the promo code? Oh, did I not give it? It is Building Strength. Building Strength, all capitals. And the code is... Uh, Free shipping for $150. I probably didn't give the code. <laughs> so many questions about the code. Um, for, for cellulite, um, you know, dry brushing is one of the best things you can do. And then you could do, you could get something like the C Buckthorn Best Skin Ever and then add, oh, forget that. You could get the C Buckthorn Best Skin Ever and then get the Lymph Tonic. It's a blend that you can add to that and you can also dry brush with that. And um, if you didn't want to get the lymph tonic or you want individual oils, you could get grapefruit and cypress. Then I would dry brush every day. If you can rebound and get in, into an infrared sauna, that would be great. It's just a sluggish lymph. Okay. And Heather. Okay, so again, just in case, it's uh, Building Strength, all caps, free shipping for over $150. And Alberta wants to know if I put my fingers in the containers and something else to take it out so I don't get bacteria in the container. You know what, the products are very stable, and I only use my own products, and I think it's okay. If at home you want to use a little spatula or something, that's totally fine. Oh, and this came up earlier. Somebody for deodorant, I forgot to answer, they were using antibacterial spray. And um, I definitely wanted to just add that that's a very toxic product and it kills the good bacteria and the bad. And it's actually not even that effective. I'm sure maybe for the deodorant it's effective, but you do want to be avoiding that product and you don't want to be using hand sanitizers. And they're not effective against um, bacteria and they, they aren't good for your skin and so you're protective your protective parts of your skin get ruined, the good bacteria gets ruined, it's absorbed into your body, and you can easily just carry around like a bottle of tea tree oil, you put one drop on the palm of your hand, rub them together, and you're clean, wash your hands, don't use soap in public bathrooms. That is my tip for traveling through the public world. Okay. Um, Any suggestions for eczema with respect to kids? 
I would eliminate all, make sure you have no um, synthetic detergents washing the clothes. Look at different um, allergens like gluten or dairy. Um, and then the Seaboxer and Best Skin Ever has great results for kids. If it's an itchy eczema, you could also get a side bottle of peppermint. And then you would just put a drop of peppermint in your hand, a squirt of the sea box or best can ever, rub it together, and then apply it to the child's um, eczema. Um, peppermint's a bit too cooling if the child's under four, um, but otherwise, if the child's older, that will be okay, and that will help with the itching. And what do we recommend for athletes' feet, sweaty feet? You can make a powder with some arrowroot, which is just a herb at the health food store. And you could add, you know, tea tree, eucalyptus, or lavender to that one or all three. When do you use the tonic? You know, you use the tonic like, like, well, I use it for air travel because it hydrates my skin. I use it for traveling when I can't get to a good water source and I don't want to use tap water or bottled water. It also, after you wash your face, it does add moisture and then, um, so if I just sprayed my face like that, like I just did, and then I would add cream, and that would really seal in the moisture. So it's very hydrating, and, and it can be cleansing as well. Um, hold on. Got to the top. And a couple more questions. Oh, wh what do you use for dry brushing? Um, you can get... You can get a dry brush at any like health food store. It just makes sure it's got natural bristle, bristles. Um, or you can look up like dry brush on the internet. I might have them on the site soon, but you can find them anywhere. And then uh, you can just, you always brush towards the heart. So you start at your fingertips all the way up towards the heart, start at your toes all the way up. And again, the brush is dry. What I like to do is take the lymph tonic, put a couple drops on the palm of my hand, take the dry brush over the hand, get it coated on the bristles. You just need one drop. And then that so, so adds great things to the circulatory system and the lymph system. Um, we've got rosemary and cypress in there and yarrow. And it's quite lovely. And, um, you know, also if we're traveling and I don't want to use the chlorinated shower, um, I'll just dry brush in the hotel room. And it, 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 um, it feels like I've had a shower and the skin is revitalized and revivified and my cheeks are all rosy again. So it's a great way to rejuvenate the body. And it's, it really is one of, the, one of the greatest things you can do for a, like a foundation piece for, uh, for being beautiful. And I was going to add, an, oh yeah, there was this guy who wrote a book called like How to Live Over 100 Years. And he would have, um, he would jump in like a cold river every day, but he also did dry brushing every day. And he said that that was one of his key secrets. So again, the website is livinglibations.com. The free shipping code is building strength in caps till Thursday night. Um, actually, you know what I'll do because there's a replay till Friday night. We'll extend it till Friday night. That'll give you time to look through everything. You can get in contact with us at sage at livinglibations.com. I had a lot of fun tonight. Again, I wish I could like hear you all out there, but I really appreciate your questions, so thanks for emailing them, and um, yeah, thank you so much. Bye. Oh, one more question. She has small bumps that have, oh, um, it depends what the bumps are, but you would try zippity doo dab. zippity doo dab is so great for acne and like those bumps where you're going, what is that? So do try that, Jen, or email us at sage at livinglibations.com. Okay, thank you so much. Bye.